Look at this bridge. It spans 1,030 meters and connects Lisbon to Almada in less than five minutes. Without this bridge, the alternative is a 55 mile round trip to the same destination. Global threat intelligence like this bridge gives our threat hunters that speed advantage, allowing them to get from A to B much faster. I'm Ben Walker and I'm exploring the world of threat hunting. I travel to the city of Lisbon in Portugal for the Logical SMEA SOC to meet the dedicated team working tirelessly to improve the odds for organizations. Now, in this episode, we'll focus on speed and how utilizing threat intelligence reports can give the threat hunting team the advantage to act quickly to protect customers' data. So in the battle against cyber threats, countries often collaborate to enhance their collective understanding of the dangers out there. Global threat intelligence is a crucial asset in threat hunting, providing valuable insights into the bad actors targeting organizations. The cybersecurity community are very open to sharing. We're all on the same side. So the threat intelligence we get um, is significant and very helpful. It really shortens the time we take to find out uh, malicious activity. It's like having a light focusing on that indicator and seeing this should be uh, looked into. Now, when you take that threat research and you enhance it that little bit more and you go, oh, this group is known to exploit this type of industry. That then becomes really quite useful from a threat hunting point of view because you can go, well, these are my customers. This is the industry they're in. This is the intel what relates to that threat. Let's just want to search and make sure we're clean. So the importance of threat intelligence is evident. But I was curious to learn how the team apply this in practice. Do they have any recent examples of using threat intelligence to protect customers? So we had one this year where you would have multiple agencies, FBI and NSA, some others from Australia, from the UK working together. And they basically identified a malicious state-sponsored uh, actor. And it's quite detailed and it was to do with a botnet attack. It'd been around for a while and built the amount of bots they've got as part of their bot network to there's over 260,000 bots they had available or found. The Joint Cybersecurity Advisory described this botnet infrastructure as a network of devices known as bots, which are infected with a type of malware that provides threat actors with unauthorized remote access. The report goes on to describe these bots as IoT devices, such as webcams, DVRs, IP cameras, running Linux-based operating systems. Now, this is the most important part. A functioning botnet can be used for a variety of purposes, including malware delivery, distributed denial of service attacks. The scary part here is that often these botnets don't do anything. You yourself may have one of these devices and it's likely you would never know until it was time to strike. So you can massively cost the company money just by targeting them. And that could be all they're after. They might not be trying to get in, they're just financially impacting. That's the other side is what's the hard bit of cyber security and threat hunting is understanding why would someone do this? What's their motivation? What are they targeting? Why are they targeting? Why have they built this? So now the team have access to this threat intelligence, I was eager to discover how they actually use it in practice. So basically the, the joint advisory there handled a, a PDF with all that was happening, the kind of devices that were affected, all of the indicators, and we took what we needed from there. So then that's where we designed that custom code, what we then go and run the hunt in the customs environment looking for basically use that uh, across all the customers to see if anything was was matching uh, those indicators. What was the conclusion? Uh, did, we, did we manage to find anything? Obviously we saw hits, but most of that was on things like the firewalls, but they were blocked. We can still take away from that to go, we had attempts. These were the attempts, these were the countries, this was the time period. We take that intelligence 
And then we look at what other data sources we got. Do we have the vulnerability information? Has it been linked to a CVE? Does that now go, well, that was a low, but now it could be a critical because we're seeing it exploited in the wild and we've got this evidence behind it. From a government department, they're saying this is a threat. So now I'm wondering, what's the difference between a threat hunter extracting and using this information versus an AI model designed to do the same thing? So the human side is very important. The technology side is also very important. But uh, we see the technology as a helper. Yes, I could have a piece of code, but some people would call it AI these days, to look through that PDF and extract information. But if you just gone through a document and extracted key things what matches patterns you're not taking the context of that so obviously in these documents they might publish an example of an attack so you might end up with indicators what has nothing to do with what you're actually hunting it was just used as the example of what they found in this case so then you're distorting your search and the other side of that is just because we found a relationship with one of those objects in an environment doesn't mean it's a true threat. And this is where that human threat hunter really adds the context of, we ask the questions. That was this sort of attack pattern. Is there anything else I can look at in this environment? Or, oh, I found one hit that looks a bit suspicious. What else is related? So then you might run further hunts with what intelligence we've got around them, just as a safety net. In a cyber world where every second counts, threat intelligence is crucial for speeding up threat hunts and closing the gap with bad actors. But threat intelligence needs action. It can't just be words on a page. We've got to blend human expertise with technology to extract those valuable insights from the research, but then also apply it with the right context to protect those customer environments. Finally, and probably most important of all, I learned that we've got to remember that this information is in the public domain. The bad actors know what we know, creating a constantly shifting battlefield. So how do we address that? How do we hide threat intelligence? How do we conceal it? And how do the threat hunters outsmart the bad actors at their own game? Join me in future episodes as we continue to demystify threat hunting and explore real cases in action.